<clears throat> okay, the take it further. This one will be short. This one's about uh, snowflakes. So although snowflakes have a variety of structures, they all freeze in the same process. And as air temperature cools, tiny droplets of water freeze and form ice crystals. Um, many pattern form a pattern with six arms. Um, as the crystals fall towards Earth, water vapor in the atmosphere freezes into crystals and they grow larger. Um, so these are some examples of snowflakes. Um, and <clears throat> what we found is, as our scientists have found, not we necessarily, but that uh, snowflakes will form differently and crystallize differently based off of the temperature and humidity. So here's a chart of that. Um, now one thing that might be confusing about this chart is that there's all these different temperatures and so the this tells us that the ones in uh, the parentheses are Fahrenheit. These are the Fahrenheit degrees here and the uh, and then the Celsius are the first ones right. Okay, so, and then up higher gets higher humidity and down towards the bottom is low humidity. So, uh, one says, what patterns do you notice in snowflake type across all temperatures? So, not what do you, it's not asking us what do we notice between when we go from the left to the right, necessarily. It's saying, if we look at all the temperatures, the whole thing, what patterns do we see? And the main thing that I am noticing is that along the bottom, right, if you just think about the bottom for a second, along the bottom, we have all of these kind of plate shaped uh, snowflakes, right? They're pretty basic, they're flattish, they seem to make these hex hexagonal, hex uh, hexagon shapes. And then we kind of get to columns, kind of are in the middle, right? And then along the tops are these more complicated shapes. And so it seems like no matter what the temperature is, right? And we are getting colder as we go to the right, which might not look, uh, you know, you might think that the temperature is increasing as you go to the right. But if you look at the degrees, let's just look at Celsius for, for first. It goes zero, negative five, negative 10, negative 15. So as we go to the right, we're getting colder. But that doesn't really change the shapes of them too much um, because no matter what the temperature is, right? If you, if you go from up, down, right? Up at the top, you have these complicated shapes, right? These dendrites, these stellar plates, kind of like the ones you see on these uh, pictures up here. And then down lower where there's low humidity, they are making these more basic plates. <clears throat> so it seems like humidity is the thing that uh, more affects kind of how they form. So uh, needles form between 10 and negative five degrees. So here's needles right here. And those are forming between uh, negative five and 10 degrees in this range. And um, <clears throat> you know, even though the Celsius numbers range include negative numbers and the Fahrenheit includes positive numbers, they represent the same below freezing temperatures. So remember that even though, say for, let me erase all this junk for a second. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, so even though we have like this temperature right here, the Celsius is negative 15 and the Fahrenheit is five degrees. This is just saying, even though Celsius is negative and the Fahrenheit is positive, right? These are two totally different scales. They mean the same exact temperature. They just measure temperatures differently using different numbers. So still real cold. And what weather conditions might bring snow that's good for building a snow fort? So I said, <clears throat> and I could, um, I didn't actually look this up, so I could be totally wrong. So um, you can look this up and argue about it more if you want. But 
just looking at this, because I wanted to answer this with, without looking this up and just kind of answering it like you might, right? So, um, <clears throat> what weather conditions might bring snow that's good for building a snow fort? So what I looked at is, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, it seems like these shapes would be good for uh, having snow that builds something. Either these shapes or maybe even these shapes. And my logic is because I'm thinking that um, these shapes won't really, these guys right here, these dendrite type shapes, they're not really going to fit together all that well, right? Like, imagine you're building things with Legos. You know, what do Legos look like? They're all pretty much block shaped. They're all kind of similar. And so that makes me think of the needles and these columns and these prisms, you know, these columns and these plate type of shapes. Um, so I would say, so I said between five and 10 degrees, because one thing that I noticed was that during those temperatures, it looks like everything is pretty much these, uh, these types of similar shapes. So they would stack together pretty well. Another thing you might say is maybe just really low humidity. Because if you had low humidity, then you'd only have these types of shapes. And those might stack together better than, say, you know, trying to stack these things together. Because you're thinking, you're not thinking like you're actually stacking giant shapes like this, but molecularly, on a microscopic level, these things are stacking up like that. So this thing was just to ask people things separately. And, um, you know, I'll do the, uh, obviously, I'll, I'll do this, I'll do the self-check as part of this one, too. So, <clears throat> make sure your uh, claim fully explains how the storm suddenly occurred. So, this is going back to this original city in Utah. So, I said that the storm most likely occurred because of low pressure systems. Because a low pressure system, right, if you remember, um, a low pressure system has all the wind going, you know, towards it in a kind of like counterclockwise motion. And so if you had a low pressure system, it's cold. And so what it's going to do is it's going to draw other uh, wind systems towards it. So you might have a cold front that moves in towards the low pressure system. And all of a sudden it's colliding with this air, which is a little bit more calm. So maybe a little bit more warm. And then all of a sudden it's creating the that thing that we talked about earlier where it is um, you know a cold front and it is causing uh, more stormy conditions um, my evidence was that weather fronts typically occur on low pressure systems uh, cold high pressure systems move towards low pressure systems and that uh, the, the warm air would rapidly rise and so that's you know I remember at the very beginning it said that the storm moved in really quickly um okay difference in pressure cause wind to blow across landscapes pressure is what causes wind um i would say that this storm front was formed when uh, a cold air mass pushed up warm air masses um what types of weather do we notice near low pressure areas precipitation all these colors mean rain and snow so there's precipitation happening there's not dry weather and it's not heat waves, it's not hot. Uh, the, the distance between the isobars near high pressure areas, so they're saying how, see like these low pressure areas that are all really close together, all these isobars, the black circles. Then you get to the high pressure system and they're more spread out, there's a lot of more space. That means that the wind is calmer. There's a greater, it's, it's really measuring pressure differences, right? So here, this is lots of pressure difference, lots of pressure difference, not a lot of pressure difference and and as we know from here the pressure differences will cause wind uh most likely the ocean surface currents would affect the weather on a small island because the surface currents would um affect the it's, it's flat so it won't suffer from the rain shadow effect which was the whole uh the rain going up the mountain and leaving going down the mountain with no rain and um, 
because it's the ocean is all surrounded by it would be controlling all the wind around the island um what is true about factors that influence weather precipitation depends on air temperature so air temperature ultimately will uh the, oh first of all it might if you're not sure why the rain shadow effect causes equal precipitation on both sides of the mountain that's not fa that's false the rain shadow effect the whole idea of the rain shadow effect i didn't mention this when we were talking about it but you know the the air goes up and over the mountain right you have a mountain here and it's green on this side and it's dry on this side and so it creates this you know where one side of the mountain is looks different is darker than the other side that's the shadow it's the rain the shadow it casts is supposed to be like the greenery and as air sinks it absorbs moisture and forms air clouds that is not true as air sinks it usually um it it doesn't it does not form it usually when it rises it's forming rain clouds because it's becoming uh the temperature is dropping so precipitation depends on air temperature so if it's uh, way up on the high up in the atmosphere so if it's warmer it might condense and rain um but if it is cold then it would snow or if it's really cold it could freeze more quickly into ice and hail something like that and these are longer explanations but and i and i actually i'm not going to talk about all i'm not going to go through these because you can see these in the key and read through them um and i explained all of these things earlier so it's just, just rephrasing things from earlier in your own words but you can see what i wrote um if you want and that's it